So, Halloween is, you know, a, a, a celebration, an activity, an event that happens that involves children. People get dressed up, they, you know, mask up, they want to be somebody they're not. And a lot of times those images today, and, and particularly to us, are about our identities. So sometimes they want to dress up as certain Muslim villains. They want to dress up as, uh, you know, people with disabilities. And all of this is in the context of spooky and scary, right? So it's about spooky and scary, reinforcing certain attitudes. So let's talk about that today, ladies. Welcome to another episode of The Pity Party. We are three Muslim Canadian women living in the greater Toronto area, coming from different parts of this globe, having something to say that will educate you, that will inform you, that will maybe help you look at us a little differently because we always have opinions. We want some pity and we want to party. Halloween. Yeah. Well, what, well, how I see that, I see that there's disability appropriation. And that also happens in movies, you know, when, when you have a role that involves a person with a disability, but an, a person without a disability takes that role, you know, and it's the same thing, you know, goes on there. And to me, I, 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 it doesn't sit well at all with me. I don't, I, I think that is so wrong. We have many people with disabilities who can fill that role and do the, you know, do that acting. I mean, it, sometimes it doesn't necessarily have to be acting. They're just being themselves there, you know? And yeah, and it, it, it's the whole issue of making people with disabilities um, look evil or look as, um, you know, spooky or, or, or scared or, or frightened, you know? So that is putting out a very wrong message. We are not spooky. <laughs> yeah, it's. It, I think it, it's true. It's compromising the inclusion, right? Because the idea is we're normal. Like we're like anybody else. Only thing is legs don't work, eyes don't work maybe, you know? Like there is something that does not function in our body, but we're still human beings to the majority. We still think and make decisions and, and live a full life. Maybe some of us in the shadow or most of us in the shadow, they're not in the limelight, right? But they're still having a life. And for us to highlight the negativity of the disability, whatever it is, like to me, it doesn't really matter who playing the role. It's what role are they playing and what sides of the disability are they highlighting? Are they highlighting the human side, the challenges, how we overcome them? Or are they just like doing a pity thing, like, you know, having, you know, enforcing that stigma of, oh, people with disability should be felt like pity and they can't do and focusing on the things that we cannot do so we can uh, sort of stir this kind of feeling in people right which is silent it sells you know what I mean because think about it like they want to do things that sells right at the end yeah. of the day and th at the cost of what though at the cost of a, a full segment of the society where we're help we're promoting this false idea that they are spooky or they are scary or because they walk differently or they look different or it's just it just keep like promoting something that's so not human right mm -hmm. maybe moving away from it and we should really be focusing like if i see somebody like rafia or rabia i look at the highlights i look at the, the blessing is how much god subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them and how how did they overcome i'm interested to hear mm -hmm. about the challenges but i'm more interested to hear what did they do to overcome it right yeah so, so a lot of they cross so, that so, bridge so for example you know a lot of times like to make it a little more concrete um, Halloween, you'll have kids dress up like pirates, right? Covering the one eye. Yeah. Right? Which okay. means, you know, like, like, and there are so many people who lose vision in just one eye. 
Yeah, right? or, or like old people too, with exaggeration, like making like old people look like witches, for example, and having having a cane. Like all these things enforce that idea. Like a cane is something to aid us. It's a, it's an assistive device, right? It's yeah. not something to be portrayed as scary or you know you do. It's the association that really sits in people's mind, right? So when they see somebody with a cane. The, 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 maybe the only introduction to a cane to them, it was during that, you know, movie or during that Halloween where they saw that. So they associate this with that and they start oh building God. on it, which is at, at the end of the day, it's it's about attitudes, attitudes. Right. And that's the, the whole thing ever around around disability. Yes. And attitudes are something that are that are taught to our children. Children do not grow up discriminating, but when a, 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 a festival that is targeting children uh, reinforces these kinds of um, visuals, right? Um, they undermine all that natural instinct that children have to be inclusive. And we actually end up teaching them in, in a subliminal way, all these negative attitudes toward people with disabilities without even recognizing it. So, you know, attitudes, we always say are the biggest barriers. We right. always say that nothing about us without us, right? So as people with disabilities, we need to play those parts. We need to lead the work. We need to speak for ourselves. You know, I, you know, Rafi, you talked about, you know, disability expropriation. <laughs> I can't even say the word, right? Um, appropriation for me i get really irked when people do you know anti-racism training or accessibility training and they don't reflect the issues that they're training people on exactly. they don't have any lived experience to contribute the conversation mm -hmm. is so much more richer when we're coming with the stories we experience right mm -hmm. okay. so let's, okay. let's talk about attitudes let's talk about the attitudes we faced you know, talking you about talking about attitudes. How much time do you have, Rabia? Okay, <laughs> let, 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 let me let me start with this one story, right? Yes. And it's even if you tell people something, they still go back to what they think. I'll tell you what happened once. I was in the mall, and I was this guy had this um, thing, you know, income tax. So I said, you know what? Let me go to him. It, I, I was just coming back from Saudi, and I had my I had to get my income tax done. So I, I went to him and he was really sit down had him having a chat. So he he said to me, um, you know, go to are you married? Yes. Um is your husband disabled? No. Right? Why do you have to know that? <laughs> but he has to know because of the income tax, you know, they get oh, that if you're disabled, you have that exemption, right? I said yeah, yeah. anyway, so he went, he filled up my day, he did whatever he had to do. A couple of months later, I got a letter from CRA. If you say that you're disabled, you need to provide the letter, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what? Then I realized that he put on the CRA form that my husband had a disability, even though I told him he didn't have yeah. a disability. That's and you, now right? you have to face the consequences. <laughs> he didn't that. hear you. He yeah, exactly. To hear even, you. If, even if you tell them what they have in their mind, that's what they go with. That's you true. know? Yeah. I knew my favorite one. My yeah. favorite one. I, I remember it so vividly, okay? Um, I don't know which child I was having. I have four. Um, going to my OBGYN's office with my husband, okay? Been there before, done that, like familiar place. Uh, very busy space. And, a, a, you know, oftentimes there's a lot of Muslims because apparently we have more babies around here. Um, so I'm sitting, he finds me a seat. He's standing up. Um, just waiting aside, and I can hear this uh, gentleman talk to him from our community. I can place by the accent what background he is, you know, Muslim. And he's talking to him, and he actually says to him, when did she, oh, no, no, how did he word it? He said, when was the accident? Yep. <laughs> now, that can be interpreted in multiple ways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being bad. Um, but when was the accident? Like, when did she become blind? You know, the assumption that, mm. you know, 
of course, there would have been an accident at some point after we got married that I... Right, right. right. No, and not before, yeah. Because... Not before or, you know, why would he choose to marry somebody with Absolutely. a disability? Absolutely. Right? Imagine, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my, my husband said, what accident? There was no accident. <laughs> which one? Tell him which one of them, right? Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know one time Brabha, we were at the at the pool you guys were swimming and I was waiting for you and uh, one lady sitting next to me from my own culture so we're not going to talk about any other culture right then she's talking to me and of course my kids are waving for me from the pool so are your kids Rabia. so I sound like I have a lot of kids right <laughs> so she looked at me and she said are they your kids I said yes and she said oh um uh, so were you did you marry before the accident or after <laughs> i said yeah. after i said after right now guess the next question exactly what you said Rana. does your husband have a disability mm -hmm. i said no right and then all these things like like right now we laugh at it but at the time you feel like my god like like, what are you trying to, where are you heading with this conversation? Mm -hmm. That I'm not, like, marriage material? Like, I'm not, like, a, a lucky I'm me. I'm not I, yes. Right, like, lucky me, I I found a guy who's, you know, willing to marry me who does not have a disability, too. And, like, look at the line of assumptions, right? Like, how, how like, uh, honestly destructive it is and how, how we think, right? Which is really, really sad. And, again, my thing is, by us doing what we're doing, Rabia and Rafia, like having kids, having a family, going out, doing what we need to do, talking about it, right? Like send the, the, the truth, let the truth shine. Because the best, the best answer and the best uh, response to any, you know, a misconception is just relay the truth, uh, I, in, in my opinion. You know? and, and sometimes I get these questions of, what happened? I, I remember yeah, going to, yeah, yeah. I remember going to a restaurant with my kids and my husband to a pizza place that's mm -hmm. no longer open. Um, and, you know, we went up to cash to pay and the woman is whispering to my husband, whispering <laughs> and gesturing. And I can feel the gestures, right? Like, what happened? And he's like, nothing. <laughs> ask her. And she's like, no, 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 I don't want to ask her. He's like, she can hear you. And she's like, no, no, no. I said, yeah, you can ask me. Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing happened. And I said, and guess what? I'm paying. I know. <laughs> you know, I pulled out my credit card just to pay to make a point that I can do things, right? Yeah. Um, but, but, yeah. but she was show and and you know what? People from my culture, yes, they're they're very nosy, they're very inquisitive they want to know i like to use those opportunities to educate people sometimes yeah. i do a little yeah. humor sometimes i suck it up and swallow it like you know we we've been in other places like i went to the lab for blood work once and you know a similar conversation happened with somebody from a completely different culture you know um saying oh so what happened to her or she's blind and my husband's like yeah but she can hear you you talk to her and, if, and, and she was still whatever. And he's like, yeah, if you don't talk to her, you're in huge trouble. Like one time I, I went to Mehdi. Mehdi doesn't like doctors, like my husband, right? He doesn't like doctors. So I, I went with him for his physical after three years of four, four years not doing it. So I we went to the uh, lab to do blood work. So I'm, I'm waiting, talking to him in line. And I'm the one who's taking him, right? Because he won't go alone, right? So we're standing there. We got to the lady and I totally forgot that I have a disability. I'm so like, I'm in a wheelchair, right? But I'm so like in the moment kind of thing, talking to him and whatever. And then the lady talked to him and say, what's wrong with her? Why is she here? Ooh. He said to her, he looked at her, he doesn't want to be there. Imagine, right? <laughs> he said to her, she's here with me and you can talk to her. Like she's helping me. <laughs> she's helping me, right? And she was like, boggle their mind poor thing like you know i i honestly i do i say poor thing in a way like because they're so uneducated on the issues that's mm -hmm. what i'm saying mm -hmm. and on the reality right because i am the one who going with him so he can get the lab and she's thinking he's coming with me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the, the assumption like how 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 wrong could it be right yeah, I think that's a wrap for today, right, Rabia? We have tons of stories around this and we can yes. go on forever, yes. but I think that's a wrap for today.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.